everybody. I think I finally have a moment to do a little lettering for the impatient. And um, being my impatient self, I don't have an outline or a layout or exactly how we're going to do it. I just know I'm going to start. And um, hopefully I have the wherewithal to number them in chapters for you. And um, if I don't, someone please remind me in comments and I will try to go back and do that. Um, just accounting for my future self. <laughs> so uh, I gave a little sneak peek of some of the things that are in my in my planner here. What I'm going to start with is recommending that when you are practicing any kind of lettering, honestly, I think you should just do it real time. If I, I mean, that's how I do it. I, I just write what I need to write because I, I just don't have time to keep practicing. Not like, not like I did back in high school or middle school. And it was a ton of fun to like, just sit for hours. But you know, that was before jobs and kids and partners and houses to clean. So my recommendation is um, when we are going to do these things, I like using either dot journals. I hope you can see the different dots in here. This is a Leuchterm 1917 dotted journal, size A5. I find the dots help in various ways as well as grids. This is the Teco paper. Well, this is the Tomo River paper. It's a Hobonichi notebook that's just blank, which is like my planner, which is the Hobonichi cousin. Uh, these are like four millimeter squares, and I'm, I, I honestly don't know what the size of this one is. But I think that dots and squares really help. I also have some blank paper, so we can do various things on blank paper. In fact, I think I'm going to start in the blank paper because it's a bit more freehand, and I think it'll show you that some of these impatient tips are good for anything. They don't have to be precise. And that's, I think that is where my planner gets its best unique look, is it's not precise. So let me just try to find a clean page. I'm just going to open this right up. This was my son's book. So let's start kind of simple. Let's see, let's see how things go. Let's say that we want to write a word. I have a little pen case here with a lot of my Micron pens in that I bring. I bring this case to work. I only have to go into the office two days a week. The rest I work from home. And so I bring this with me when I want to uh, write something in my, in my planner. I just want one that is not too thick because I feel like the thicker the thicker the pen, the more it adds. So this is just a Micron 01 pen, fairly thin, see, like this. And I am left-handed, so let's hope that you guys can see this very pretty well. So first, let's start simple. Start with all capital letters, okay? So um, let's do, we'll just say capital. And I'm going to write it different ways because I don't want you to get too stressed about oh those are really neat letters so let me also write it like that kind of fast let me also write it in lowercase kind of fast you know and then I'll do a little bit more precise in lowercase so imagine you're like the teacher who's teaching students how to write letters a couple things right away that I want to point out there are different ways to do different letters right and you can choose as you go along the A's, for instance, sometimes I do an A like this. I'll do like a C and add a line. Sometimes I go like this and make an A. Sometimes I just go like this. And other times I'll add a tail with a circle and another tail. What we're going to do with these letters, I know it's kind of crazy because I'm all crooked. I'm left-handed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got to figure out a good way to do this. Um, what we're going to do first is decorate each letter, and it can be so much easier than I think we all realize. So let's take the nice neat one, for instance, right? My initial very first time lettering or decorating my letters was to do what my sister, my older sister called ribbon um, lettering. So she would just take the ends of the letters and she'd make them a little thicker, just like this. Just go to where the curve starts, making it a little thicker and fill it in. And let's do that to like, let's, the next one we'll do it to the A for instance, right? Now, even though it's a little messy, I'm just going to take the ends and I'm going to add a little bit of thickness to it. In this P, I'm going to go to the end here and I'll go to the end here and add it there. 
with round letters, you can actually also go on the inside. So you can either keep it that way, which when it's the whole word looks kind of cool, or you can just go on the inside of its peak, say, or any of its like most concave curve. I don't know if concave is the right word. So there you have that. And we'll do it here as well. And at the dot at the top. Now, just to show you how the whole word would look, um, let's do first the neater one. So here's capital. Let me try to get closer. I know I'm, I'm not good at this, you guys. I'm going to do my best. So we're going to fill in the end of each letter. It does not have to be neat. You make it as neat or as messy as you want. See here, I went from the from the top all the way down and gradually increased its size. That's another great way to do it. I'm going to leave it for now so you can see. I'm going to leave that curve for now so you can see. And I, again, on this T, because there's two parts, distinct parts, I'm just going to do one for now. And then you can see how it... Um, can actually change the look when you go. And the L, I'm gonna put it at the top. So we could stop there if we wanted to. That's that's nice enough. You could even do it with a different color. So for instance, let me just do the C and the A and the P. And let me grab another color so that we can see how it would look. Let me take my little case. I'll take my red. And if you take just that and fill it in, And this time I went in the inside. There's no rule to it, honestly. And I'll go to the inside of the P there. But that adds its own kind of dimension, if you will. You could also, with these micron pens, for instance, that's an 01. I'm going to take a 5. And I'll go over and make it just a little thicker where it was already black here. And I'm just going over it. And now you can see it looks like it's just a little bit highlighted. Now, if you see how the look is there, let me see if I can, I'll just do this whole word. And then I'm gonna put like capital point. Because I'm making a point here. Any of these you can do, stop at any time, do it halfway. It's going to look cool and unique and different than other regular letters. So we go over this. Feel free to, to do it while I'm doing it. That one came off pretty straight. That's another trick. Sometimes my brain rushes so fast, but that's why it's called impatient, isn't it? And I'm going to get ahead with other techniques. The thing that I want, see on an O, there is no point, so you just go on the inside of the, of the round bit. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Apologies. And again, just one part. So seeing it all spelled out, all by itself, fairly cool, right? Now, if we wanted to actually go in and expand on that idea, so we make that a little fatter, we make this a little fatter, we make this a little fatter on the inside, we even go to the end of the L right here. And here, do each leg of the N. Every point of the letter can have some kind of embellishment on it, even the inside of the C, if we wanted to make that just a little bit thicker. And if you want to go through and color it all in, that's great. I like when it kind of shows some white. I think it gives it a, a sketch-like quality. But you can make this as precise as you want. With thicker point pens, it actually also looks maybe even cleaner, you know. And if you go a little slower, so all you impatient people, try your best. Now here's something cool about just taking this ribbon technique and playing with it. So let me go, I'm going to keep this, this here. So here's this messy C, right? We're going to get back to the messiness. I'm going to just outline it with my thicker pen, color it in. I'm going to do it here with the P and the I. And we're just adding a little bit more substance to it. We're making it a little bit more stable on the page. 
just by giving it weight. That's really all you're doing is you're giving each letter some weight. And my, my goal here is to show you that no matter how you write, whether it's messy or neat, you can always do lettering with it. So now it already looks a little bit stronger, you know? And that's the point, I think, with lettering is to make it stronger, make it stand out some. So let me actually follow up on this in a different way. So this is probably going to be like the second. This is what I would call like the simplest way to do some sort of lettering. Maybe not even the simplest, but the one that if you want to have one to practice, this could be it because you could start doing it much cleaner. And I'll try to find an example in my planner so that you can see. Let me see here. A little bit bigger. I use this quite often, actually. Um, see this oops? That's a, a similar idea. Um, this overnight oats, similar idea. Um, vitamins, very clear. That's just a ballpoint pen. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? That's very similar to the ribbon lettering. My tabbouleh bowl down here. Just makes it thicker, not quite as uh, ribbony. Let's see, where else do we have? Um, this in cursive is kind of a play on that. So let me show that real quick, actually. We go over here and we say cursive. Not the best pen to do with this. So I'm going to go into my C, come up, make the U a little wide. Gosh, I hope you can see. Oh, I'm terrible. And even here, we're going to make that a little wide. I kind of like how the bottom of that S looks, so I'm not going to touch that. Highlight this E here a little bit. All right, very simple stuff. Well, to me, of course, and I, I realize that that could be different for, <laughs> for everybody. But this is one of my favorite tricks, and I, I should feel like I should have led with this. Maybe in editing, I do. <laughs> so this is the one that I find to be, I'm going to just make the letters normal first. Here's tip one. Maybe I should have written an outline on this, okay. So there's easy. I'm going to write easy a little bit different now. Simple tip to take home. When you do ease, if you just put one of the bars lower, changes the whole look of it. Same with any bar in a letter. Take the A, make that bar lower as well. With the S, make this second curve shorter and the, the top one longer. So this is like several little bits. See how it changes that? With the Y, you can either make the Y very short and shallow up top, or you can make it very long with a short stem. Because of the stems down here, I'm going to go a little bit of a higher one and low at the bottom. And that in itself is a whole different way of writing it. Now let's do the opposite. Say we do E here, we put it up at the top. They give completely different looks. We'll make the top of the S short, and now we'll make the top of the Y short. Now let's try lowercase. We're gonna go high up top. Well, first we'll do it normal. Okay, how about we do that? We'll do, we'll do it normal. Now, let's make it short up top, long at the bottom. The A will just keep it like it is, but maybe we just put a little stem at the bottom of the A. We'll do short up top, long at bottom. And for the Y, short up top, long at bottom, and keeping it the same height at the top and the bottom. Now let's do it a little bit different. Long up top, short at the bottom. We'll keep this here, but maybe we put the whole stem in it. Long up top, short at the bottom. Long up top, short at the bottom. These are all just letter shapes and they all look completely different. Now let's dress them up. Let me show you a couple of ways I like to dress things up like this. Using my same pen, I'm gonna draw a line straight down the side. And now I'm gonna color in a little bit of it, just like that. Gonna do the same thing on the A. Take one side, draw a line, color in a little bit of it. For the S, one line here, one line here, 
color in a little bit. I don't color in all of it, but I mean, you can. There's no, there's no rule here. Now we can pick. We can go this way, make it, if I went this way, I would make it just a little bit longer because I like the balance of that. We could go this way, but that seems kind of predictable to me. And I like, I like for my things to be a little unpredictable, a little chaotic. So I'm going to go this way and color it in a bit that way. There's one way to dress that up. Here's another way. Anything that you see on the inside, you can just draw a line and keep it going until it ends. It looks kind of funny right now. Start and see if you like how it looks better if you add lines. And let's keep going with it and see how we like it. Oops, I could have gone a little bit lower, but that's fine, it still works. Now on this S, let's go create a bridge, a little, a little container. Go around that curve and then maybe just end it right there and draw some lines. This is where it's decorating the letter. Y's, this one we could go on the outside of it and go straight down. We could do the whole inside. I like the idea of going this way right now and doing it like that. I don't love the E, but it's still fun. If you wanted to, you could just embellish the E even more, for instance, um, by just carrying that down. And it looks even better just by doing that. And the A, you could carry that over. Little tiny things that you can do to make it nicer. This easy, let's embellish that some more. Let's take the outside edge and just draw dots around the side of it. And let's do that wherever you have space. This is the thing, you kind of have to, if you know you're going to embellish it, you can create space knowing how you're going to do it, or you work with what you already built and try to make it fit. So here are my little dots around easy. Another way to do this that, um, let me see, how did I do it? I did it at the top. This was a boop. I just want to show. Almost went too long there. That you could also go on the inside with just very simple dots like this. Gosh, I still hope you can see. And I like going around the edge there. Very easy. Lowercase letters, let's try it the same and maybe not quite as drastic because we have smaller space. So I'll go inside the curve of this E and color it in. I'll go to this curve of the A and color it in. I'll draw a line down the curve of that S and color it in. I will draw one line here and color it in there. And we just dressed it up a little bit. For these, I kind of like them as they are, and I'm hesitant to add any extra, but let me show you something that I just love how it changes everything. Take this E and add a serif to the end. And that's it. Just add a line to the end of any stem. The S is all three parts of the Y. And it looks like a completely different letter. That one I like to use in my, in my book a lot. Um, and then for this easy, how about we try balls? Put balls at the end, little circles. Nice, right? It's, it's actually, it can be so much more simple than I think we give ourselves credit for when we're doing something. Let me look through my book and see something else that we can work with. So a word like this, okay? If you do all capital letters or not, just make space. So that one, for instance, was work. Oops, I wanna make sure you can see me. Work. So what I did, I'm, I like to close my loops. I didn't in that case. What I did with work is I just added, let me get it back for you. I just added little hash marks that go in the same direction. And you know what, just to be a little dramatic and fun, let's use a different color for it. So I'll use orange. So I'm gonna take my orange pen. I have a terrible clamp for my phone, so I can't see if you can see. And let's just make, 
as long as you can go straight across without touching any other branch or part of the letter. Spacing hardly matters. Like let's for this O, for instance, let's do it a little longer and a little further apart. This is what I think they would say gives the letters movement. My only rule with this would be try not to touch the next leg of the letter when you're doing it while still keeping the hash marks a little bit uniform. See how it kind of gives it this whoosh feeling, which leads me to another thought. If you're writing work, I have a couple thoughts. I have, I have many thoughts. Let's write work the same way we just did. Now, instead of doing these hash marks that go in the same direction, let's copy what we did here with just an outline. It's very, it's very much like the, the lettering we just did with the ribbon lettering, but now we're just making an outline like this and filling it in. For some people, that might just be an easier way to understand what your brain is supposed to be doing, what your hand is supposed to be doing. So see the outside there and here, and you just fill it in. Now some people will do this a lot neater. Some people will find it. It might not be as, as uh, neat as some amazing YouTubers I see who do these sorts of things, but it does help you understand how to outline your letters I know that some people find just outlining confusing, but if you just follow the line and say, I'm only gonna build up on this side and build up on it. Now watch this cool thing. What we did here, let's connect the dots. You don't even have to connect it here. Honestly, you can just leave it. We can go back and connect it and see how it looks but it is kind of neat to just leave it. It gives it more of a 3D aspect without even trying. But I think that's a really, that looks really cool, right? In fact, I just did something very similar. Oops, I went way too far ahead. With looking, looking, scanning. I think it was this week that I did it. Oh yes, like I loved this. Like you see this here? I think that looks really cool, right? So let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's use, what's a good word? I'm going to use the word, word. We're going to go word and just write in capital letters. And I'm sorry I go all over the place, but look at the different ways you can do an R. You can do an R like this, where it's a P, and then out from the edge of the curve, you add a stem. You can do an R where it comes from right up there right at the, where it meets. You can do an R very narrow and shallow, doing the same things, and look at it when they're side by side in the two different ways. Completely different letters, right? You can have it very tiny up top and long here. You can also have it very low and out like this. You could do it 50-50. You can have it come here and here. You could actually even go like this or like this, and even more so, which is totally fun. Like so many ways that you can restructure a letter. There's no rule to doing this. I mean, how cool would that be to have a whole word written that way, right? So back to what I was showing you before. We're going to draw a line like so. We're going to do it here. We're going to do it here. And we're going to do it here. In that structure, just draw lines across like so. There you go. So I feel like I don't want to get too ahead of myself and I want 
I think this is some good stuff to start with. I have so many other things I want to add and talk about that include color. Um, let me see. Let me see. I feel like I feel like I don't want to leave you guys in the dust and feel like I didn't I didn't help at all. So <laughs> let me just show you a little bit of the color stuff that I mean. Let's use these other capitals that we wrote but haven't finished working with. This is a Tombow pen. One end is um, a fine point and one end is a brush. Today, I also used a 50% off coupon at the craft store. And these are essentially the same as Tombow's. They are watercolor brush pens. Um, Tombow is water soluble. So if you, you were to use water or a brush on it or another colored marker over it, the colors will blend. These are also double-ended and these are a fraction of the cost. So um, you see you get a brush pen and the, a smaller one here. So either of these will work for what I'm going to show you. So let's start with the brush pen. You wrote a word out, right? We don't even need to finish filling it in. We can even go up here if we'd like to. Take the brush end, be a little, um, don't be too careful, and just go over it with a flat look, just flat, like, just like that, that's all. Or take the thin end, say you decorated already, you can use any of these other tips over here to decorate your letter, and it would still look cool. Um, let's say we do the hash marks that give it movement, and we just choose to do that for almost all of it with just a color. I hope you can see the color. All right, see, it will add good movement. I feel like a darker color would be better to show off right there, so let's see if this purple... Oops, I used the brush end. This is one of those Staedtler ones. Let me go over to the small side. I didn't even look when I picked it up. Even the end there, you could, you can, I mean, world is your oyster, man. Do what you want to do. We can even add it to this yellow and give it more, more attention. Nobody minds. I like my planner. I like looking at the chaos of it and color definitely adds all that chaos. So let's take like the green Tombow and we can do it over here too. It is a bit thicker. The Staedtler is definitely finer. It's actually my first time opening them up to use. Something like that. Let's see. Even this is just fine, but let me show you one of my favorite things. This will be my last tip because this, this video is almost 30 minutes long and I don't want to be overwhelming, but I also don't want to be boring. Oh my God, imagine, imagine. So I'm going to write the word capital in yellow here. And I'm going to do it in my cursive as well because I want you to see how cool it is like that too. Um, if you don't really write cursive, Write your letters in lowercase and then add a little tail between each one. Even if a T is like that, I'm telling you it looks cool. It almost looks like a city six skyline. But this is where I really like it. You can either take, let's start this way. Let's start. Sorry about that, my video died. <laughs> so I wanted to point out my, my battery died, our storage was full, geez Louise. I wanted to point out that I like leaving a little bit of white space when I outline this, but you do not have to. I just find though that it goes faster and still looks cool. And, um, and it doesn't, I don't know, sometimes I don't like things to look like I'm trying too hard. Does that, does that make sense? Is that a real crappy thing to say? Well, it is what it is, I guess. So. So that looks cool, right? Now I'm gonna take a black and I'm going to um, do it with this. And I just, I really, I really like doing this. So, and you just follow the outline. You do not have to redo any letters. You're just following the outline of the, um, of the brush pen. Now we have a choice. We can go up and follow it because I naturally break my T out so it's separate. And I'm, I'm just going to do it to see how it looks. And I'm still following just the outline of it. It's like it's like coloring, you know. Now we know that there's a hole here because I can see the white space and we know this is an A. I don't have a direct hole so I'm just going to put a line 
you could add a hole, doesn't matter. In fact, on the next A, we'll add a hole to it. So if you actually look at your writing like it is a pen, like it is a, a drawing or a splotch, I think you're less likely to make mistakes because you're seeing the negative space around it. So that looks cool too, right? Let's do the same thing here. Now, I'm going to start first by doing just one side and stopping because that in itself is a pretty cool look. So I'm going to start and do this, what I'm going to call the inside. And this is the one that, remember, we just drew together. I hope I, I, hope I recorded that part and you saw it. <laughs> I'm just going to go down like so, do my circle of my A, circle of my P, circle of my A. Totally looks like a skyline, right? In fact, I might even do like this. So this could be very cool if you visited a city and you want to put the name of the city. The underside, let's just see what it looks like if we do like with this little bit of a darker like lime green color. I'm just curious, honestly. I don't know what it would look like. I just think it could be kind of cool. Like maybe you went to visit an ocean state. And you could do it in blue and, and color underneath it to be a blue ocean. The green's not terrible. You probably can't see it so well on the, um, let me find a darker green. Probably can't see it so well under there, under the camera light. So I'm going to do it with a darker green. Oh, probably still can't see it so good. In the end, black probably would still be the great thing, but I just love how it looks like a city. That's that's really tickling me. Let's see if I use this. This is a, a Pigma FB pen made by Socora. This feels really nice to write with. I always get shaky when I use it, though, because I, I find that it's it's smoother when I go fast. But there you go. Um, you want to embellish it a little bit more, a little bono tip before I, I stop. Let's let's just do some marks like this underneath, underneath all the parts. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. Take your black and maybe some parts you just do just the, just the inside. Just little nooks and crannies. And it makes it just a little bit a little bit more you know just a smidge more you don't need much you, you really don't so i hope this was helpful and i am excited to actually make another one and um show you just all the other different ways you can decorate your letters it it, it does not have to be i don't know what the word is um I don't want to say Instagram worthy because I think that anybody's writing when you decorate it or embellish it with any kind of color or addition, it is Instagram worthy. It's totally normal and awesome. Like, I mean, I think it's, I think it's really cool. I'm looking at this. I'm going to, I'm going to go around it just like I did with the other ones. In fact, I have started things and it, it ended up not looking great and it doesn't matter. So let me try to see if I can. Find an example. I'm, I'm just I'm all scatterbrained. This must be such a treat for, <laughs> for you guys to listen to me. There are places where I just know it's not going to be great, um, and it just you just walk over it. So, I mean, in the end, I'm fine with it. I'll write just normal and color around it with a marker, and I think it's it's totally fine. Um, used a fat marker, then used a blue pen to outline the letters and all of a sudden it looks neater. Here's how we just did that very last capital where I wrote normally and then I just used a brush pen to go over that. Um, putting hash marks in more than one branch of a letter right here. We'll go through some more. I just want to I want to see how this was for everybody and if you want to if you see anything in particular um, try to shout it out and we can do it. Play around with using lowercase and uppercase at different sizes. That's just, that's such a great tip. I use it all the time. Um, we'll get through it. We'll get through it, you guys. We'll get through it together. It's going to be so much fun. And I think that's all I have for you today. Please enjoy your day. I can't wait to see your comments. I can't wait to see how this worked out for everybody. Catch you later, home skillets.